Good evening, Mr. President, uh, Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Uh, speaking on the on this uh, topic, uh, Comcast and AT and T. Back in this fellow, Mr. Uh, Gardner, giving Flynn a bad deal about this cable, talking about two percent, but uh, around then it was around three and point something percent, and you know, about five percent. And all that stuff, I remember them cents and stuff. And he said, but gonna give us four days to uh, we wrong us, we do and wrong us, we don't, to give Flynn another bad deal to get them $12 million. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. city council members. Um, I just wanted to speak on this Comcast thing. Listen, my Comcast bill, when you it's $109, and some of us are poorer than some of these that say they're poor. <laughs> but my surcharge fees and my taxes raise my Comcast bill up to $115 a month. So for me to get any more fees added onto my Comcast bill, I just want you to know, I, I, I can't afford no more money. Uh can I speak on this Comcast deal right now? Yep. All right. Point blank. Shut it down. Start over. Let's start something fresh. <laughs> Man, you guys know Paul Harry knows more than all of you put together, with the exception of maybe these two. No offense. This guy's been struggling for 30 years to make things right. The optics and all this, I've been hearing it since I was a kid. Start over. Understand something. Time. Keep contrast, get them out of here. Let's renew this. 5%, 3%, 2%, bull. You know what? You got the leader sitting right in that back room that knows everything that's going on and can run this whole thing. Give him the opportunity to take over the situation. Let's do it right. Hi. And I want you to look. Well, good evening, President and the council persons. Um, just on this contract um, with Comcast, I just ask that you guys really take a moment and look at the longevity of the contract. I think it was 10 years, Ms. Inez said. So that, too, should be in consideration as, you know, we're looking forward. And Paul Heron has done a lot for the community with Channel 17. Um, he knows a lot about what um, needs to happen with Comcast. But one of my main concerns is just looking at the uh, longevity of this contract that we're going into. Thanks. Good evening. Uh, Paul Herring has been fighting this fight for over 30 years now. Paul Herring has been fighting this fight for over 30 years now. We would know, I mean, as far as following him, uh, he knows what he's talking about. And if we haven't entered into a new contract, it's not like we're breaking a contract. Why can't we, every time we turn around, it's a contract at last minute. It's put in two, three days before we have to do anything. And then everybody's saying, well, I can't do anything because uh, you know election time is coming. Skip election. If it's right, it's right. I don't care who's talking about me because of some of the fact, hey, I'm doing the right thing. So if I'm doing the right thing, no matter how they turn it and no matter how the optics look, it's gonna still benefit Prices. you. Because you was looking out for the So why not go in there and say, hey, you know what? You're gonna lose your $12 million if you don't renegotiate this contract. Let's, let's grow some and say, hey, you know what? We're not gonna even pass this contract today. Or we're not gonna even sign it. Don't even pass the ordinance. Let's see what happens. Uh, Mr. Because Paul Herring. Mr. Paul Herring. Mr. Herring. My name is Paul Herring. I reside at 525 Mason Street, and I'm scared. I'm scared. Let me define the word gangster for you as best I can. Comcast is gangster. Ten-year contract, 15-year contract, they wait 30 days before it expires to bring it before you. Gangster. Right. The contract goes into effect whether you sign it or not. Gangster. You probably can't even cancel it. Gangster. 
I'm scared. We're being punked. And what do we do? We say that we don't want to pass through a 2% increase in Comcast bills. Comcast got no problem doing that. Not at all. They're going to raise your rates. Comcast is scared. Television's environment is changing. People are pulling the cable and going to the internet. We get nothing off the of internet. They don't pay us for telephone services. They don't pay us for security services. They don't pay us for broadband. So as these fees diminish, what are we going to do? They could come back tomorrow and say, hey, we're out of the cable business. And your 5% is gone. When are you going to start negotiating for those broadband services? When are you going to say those trucks that provide broadband to our citizens use the same roads that the Comcast cable trucks use? They're still using our infrastructure. Why aren't we collecting on that? Gangster. We've got an opportunity here to get something. You know, people in Flint aren't afraid to pay for what they want. They just want what they pay for. And if we could pay for schools to have studios and senior citizen complexes to have studios, and most of all, to have every government meeting in this city televised so we can watch you guys. That's what you're afraid of. That's what you're afraid of. The only one that's holding you accountable today is Channel 17. The only one that goes from gavel to gavel. We can get our two minute sound bites from Channel 12. We can get our one minute sound bite from Channel 25. But public access is here for the people, by the people. And all things purely social, damn it. We got to be as separate as the fingers. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Yet one is the hand and all things beneficial to our mutual progress. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. To me, I feel that this is usurping the process of what we have to do as a council and elected officials. The irony behind this is, if we vote, it still, the irony behind this is, if we vote, it still passes. If we don't vote, it passes. My sentiments is, is that we cancel this and bring it back to the table for renegotiation or some form of negotiation because this is going to raise, or it can, it has the possibility or the potential to raise people's bills up. Us as elected officials, I can only speak for myself, but I believe there are my colleagues may believe it with me. We never want to put a burden on the residents on top of a burden that is already on them. And so in my estimation of this, if we vote, it still passes. If we don't vote because the state has a law, that if we don't vote or do vote, they still take, o take control over this contract. My feeling is, is that we cancel this, bring it back to the table and negotiate for something that we would like to have in. We, sh we should definitely our try our best and put forth every effort not to increase any kind of, of um, bills, money to our constituents' bills. But there is just something about this contract and I don't care how long it's been going on, but there's something about this contract that just stinks. I work with contracts, well not every day, but I am in a contract situation 365 days a year. And before we sign a contract, the contract administrator at our company brings the contract and all parties involved and we discuss the things in it that's not beneficial and the things that are beneficial. And then we have an opportunity, even during, after the contract has been signed, to come back and renegotiate. There is something very fishy about this contract when it's brought to us, and it seems strategic, mm -hmm. it's brought to us a few days before mm -hmm. it'll go into effect even if we don't sign it. I've never seen a contract like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't care whether it's a municipality, it just doesn't seem like a good contract. And anybody who, in my mind, who presents this kind of contract seems to me to be fishing. And if it's been done for years, just because we've been doing it doesn't mean that we should keep doing it. So my colleague, Councilman Mays, had a good, good and I listen to people, 
had a really good point, and he says, I don't even know if we can, we can trash it and then make them come back to the table. Well, every contract that I've been involved in, you can do that. So then when I even questioned Mr. What's his name? Gardner. And, and we have to understand, he's here to represent and protect his company, and they should pay him for that, because he does it well. Yes, he does. But we're here to represent and protect our citizens in these contracts. And there's just something that I don't really like about this contract. I, there, I, I, if, it, if we don't sign it, it goes into effect the 16th. Who in the world would even entertain something? Like, who wrote this thing? And there's so much that I feel that I don't know to make an intelligent decision to support this thing. And I, I, I know how impo important uh, public access is, but when you talk about the PEG, that's for the public, the education, and the government, and it seems like we only have one. I don't, I don't, I don't like this, and until I get some better information, and I don't care about election time coming up. That's right. You know, I'm gonna make a decision based on the intelligence of what I read, and my understanding, and if somebody can make me understand this better and see how this benefits us, the citizens of Flint, I wouldn't care if I didn't get elected again. I'm not signing this thing. I'm not voting for it. Mr. Kincaid? I want to make sure that we don't lose the revenue from the 5% franchise fee, because that's $1.2 million that comes to our general fund that supports our police department, our fire department, our general operations of the city of Flint. So, you know, I, I just don't want to not at least recognize the fact that we, we agree that we should have the 5% franchise fee in there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. only because if this contract goes into effect without us doing anything, I don't want it to go into effect without any franchise fee. Because I don't believe that if we don't agree to put something in section, in section six, oh, six, six, no, I think it was six, that talks about the franchise fee. I think eight okay. talked about the peg fee. Right. I want to make sure that our community doesn't lose that $1.2 million of general fund. Public Act um, 480 of 2006, and that, that's really the, the concern. That was effective January 1st, 2007. And um, it does talk about within the act that no existing franchise agreement with with a franchising entity shall be renewed or extended upon the expiration of the agreement. So um, we have to, um, if, if that's the will of this body and administration, is that we have to be proactive to fill in the amount so that we don't lose that amount. And I think that was your question earlier was, what is the ramification? Well, if, if we don't fill it in, then someone else can do it for us. When you look at, and Councilman Winfrey has kind of summed it up, but one of the things that I'm always concerned with is when you have someone that represents a company and usually when you're trying to enter into a contract like this, which in my opinion is very lucrative, and I appreciate 1.2 million in revenue, um, yet you're looking at Comcast that's gonna make 12 million a year on this community. So when you look at that over 10 years, you're looking at at least $120 million. Any company that comes in that is trying to win you over, there's a level of information that they present to you. There's generally not a question that you would have that they haven't already anticipated. Anybody that's been in sales, the number one thing you're taught is always anticipate anything that can be an obstacle or anything that that client might ask you. And I just want to say for the record, 
when it appears that a contract this lucrative is already a done deal, it's heartbreaking because no offense to the Comcast representative, he works for Comcast. And, and in my interaction, it just felt like every question was, I don't have the answer to that. I can't tell you who that. I can't share that with you for privacy. Are you kidding me? We are a municipality that is getting ready to sign a 10-year deal with you. If you need time to speak with us individually to be able to share information, you're getting ready to get $12 million a year from this community. And I'm just, I'm just sorry, you guys. I just don't believe that a person will go into the grand blank leadership and not have answers for them. And, 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 and I'm not talking about race, because it's not necessarily race. That's right. But there is a level of, of, of the way you treat people when you look at social class. Because everybody in Flint is not black. That's right. And so, but it just speaks to social class. It says that you speak different to a leadership of this community yeah. than you do of a leadership of this community. Yeah. And just for the record, you guys, we didn't get that type of professionalism, I didn't believe. And even after the questions that we raised at the committee meeting on Wednesday, that this representative could not answer, he didn't bring in support. He didn't bring in his boss or the people that are working directly on the city of Flint to overcome because some of the questions that were asked today are the same questions that were asked on Wednesday and yet today, we didn't receive any more information than we received on Wednesday. And so I'm just saying for the record, it's unacceptable. And we need to be talking to our state legislation to find out you shouldn't be able to get 12 million from my community automatically, ever. And so I just, wanna, I just want that to be on the record. And oh, I did wanna say one more thing. For the residents that will see us live streamed on Facebook or however, I just want to say for the record, in looking at the 2% that we were hoping would be a possibility in the PEG fees, many times as a, as a community, we are the financers for programs for our children, for our elderly, for some that don't get out. And so for me, when I look at, and I'm not talking about everybody's pocketbook, it was raised, I respect that, y'all. I'm not trying to be taxed, I'm not trying to be levied, but when I look at some of the, the, the things that it was said that those 2% could possibly do for the children in our, in our school systems, for the seniors in their communities, in rec centers and things of that nature, when you look at that, you have to understand that our children are trying to compete with communities that have access to the best technology, to the best educational systems. And so as a community, when we start looking at our pocketbooks, y'all, this is the next generation. And so as much as we waste money, we need to be willing to dig deep into our pockets to ensure that our children are able to perform academically at the same level that other communities are. And if that means that I have to pay $10 a month on my Comcast bill, and I'm not talking about seniors, please don't misunderstand, but I'm talking about being able to invest generationally down into a community, I mean into a generation that most people think is lost. But I'm here to tell you, they are the most innovative but if you don't put the right resources in their hands, there's only so much they can do. So when you think about Councilwoman Galloway trying to look in your pockets and take more money, no, she's not. But you know, in the older generation, there were some of your parents that said, you're not working on the farm. You going to college. And they wanted you to go to the colleges that had the best resources and the access to, to things that weren't in our community. We got to have that same mindset, and if it may be sacrificial, y'all, we need to show the generations that are coming up under us that there are certain things that we're willing 
to put a price to, and they are worth it. Now, we finding out about Public Act 480. Ain't nothing we can do about it. If it's a state law that's, if it's a state law said go into effect and we can't do nothing and we saying to the state legislatures, we don't like this law. Change the law. If it wasn't for this law, we could negotiate with Comcast. You know, when I was the only one on the ballot, they changed the law within two weeks and put everybody else back on the ballot. So I'm not going to say call <laughs> Snyder, Cali, and Anna Nick and ask them to change Public Act 480 in two weeks, but you know they can move fast when they want to. But that's what's giving us the problem, 480. But now we got another way out. If council really wanted to move before December 2016 and the date of 12, you can call a special meeting on the Comcast contract on the 14th or 15th. And by the 14th or 15th, you can get some more questions answered. I don't think you're going to change Public Act 480 in two or three days. Everything I done figured out tells me I'm going to support first reading, Mr. Kincaid. I'm going to support the 5% franchise fee. I ain't mad about the 0.35. And remember the language I said, Ms. Galloway, I might put some legal language that say 2% and or at least 0.35. So whatever the council do, Mr. Winfrey, I ain't going to even try to change your position because I know I vote differently from the council more than two or three times. So I'm going to be ready to vote on first reading. And Mr. Kincaid, I can support your recommendation. Now, hopefully, the council know what I said because we didn't discuss this, but hopefully the public can pick up on some of it, too. Thank you. Listen, I, I want to really make, I want to make a referral. Okay. And that is at our next finance committee meeting, and, and I'm going to, I agree, uh, Councilman Kincaid, Councilman Mays, and all the other colleagues, I agree that we shouldn't lose this 5% franchise fee because it, it helps our police department. We lose that, and then we might lose police officers and in other areas uh, of the city services. But I'd like to make a referral that at the next <coughs> finance committee meeting that we have Mr. Collins to come and let's talk. I cannot believe that even he believes that a contract can't be renegotiated. I just, th this is not good for us that we, th this, this whole. Bring the union in. The union. I don't care who we bring, but yeah. I need, he needs to be, he yeah. signed it. Yeah. But I'd like to have him so that we can talk That's about correct how we can move forward in a partnership, because this is not one to me, not, not one that with, with, with equal standing, in my opinion. Okay. Thank you.